Scott Carmichael from Prodigy Search with another episode of Prodigy Search Presents and extremely honored and privileged today to have Peter Luco, Chairman of Oakview Group Facilities, overseeing all venue development management, including the Arena Alliance, among other things, and Peter will get into that. But obviously prior to OBG, many of you know Peter's 25 years as a former president and CEO or COO of Comcast Spectacor, included running the Flyers and Wells Fargo Arena and many, many other ventures we'll, we'll talk in as well. Longtime friend, Peter and I worked together for about 25 years, um, not 25 years, we worked together back in, I think, the mid 80s and at the LA Coliseum and Sports Arena uh, when Peter came out on behalf, I think it was uh, SM, the old SMG at the time. Yeah, we were, uh, we had just, we were SMI merging with FMG to become SMG all at right. the same time. You and Joel Ralph came out I yeah. think at the time, and it was at 85 or 86 around the Coliseum, and I was there as well. So I've known Peter for a number of years, and, and again, Peter, it's an honor and a privilege to have you spend a few minutes with us today to get caught up. want to, um, Peter, jump right into it, and just, in, um, you know, I hope you're staying safe and out of harm's way, as we all are, not only in the country, but globally, but you know, obviously with the crisis and all that's going on, and first and foremost, I know, um, you know, the, the Belmont project and, you know, with the coronavirus and with uh, New York City being the epicenter uh, of much and the governor halting all construction, which I think I believe also included Belmont. What's the update there, Peter, on the, on the, on the progress of construction? Uh, well, we've been very fortunate. Um, Seattle has been moving along and is right on schedule under construction. Uh, Austin is under construction. Our, our arena in Savannah is under construction. A couple of weeks ago, we, we had a stop in Belmont, obviously with the situation in New York and the uh, pandemic there. But uh, we feel you know, pretty much in the near future, we'll, we'll be right back on construction and on schedule. Uh, we're very fortunate, as you know, in the Northeast, we had a very, very mild winter, uh, yeah. mild winter in terms of temperature, mild winter in terms of um, precipitation, you know, very little snow or rain. So we're, we were quite a bit ahead of schedule. So we're, we're feeling very comfortable that we'll get right back to where we were. And we were at the stage in Belmont where we didn't have hundreds of people on site. So our ability to restart will be rather quickly. Is October 21, Peter, ideally, uh, you know, I know that's, you know, you're pushing it and going full speed, but that's still the plan and hope? Yeah, we're, we're on schedule there and ready to open and, and feeling really good about it. Good. I was going to ask you about Seattle and Austin. I know you've got many other projects that Oakview is constructing, not only in the U.S., but globally. But um, Austin and the University of Texas, the arena you are constructing the joint venture there. That's that's going well. Um, and you mentioned Seattle. You touch on those a little bit in terms of progress and timing. Yes, Seattle's really an engineering marvel. Uh, as you know, we're keeping the iconic roof in in Seattle, and uh, it's quite a project. We're, we're literally. Uh, the roof was hanging in the air being supported by steel beams that will be taken out and not even used in the project. Um, and, and it's really going to be a special project because the, the arena itself, if you've been there, it, it really fits right into the neighborhood and, and you can almost drive by it and not know it's there. So uh, we'll, we'll maintain that where we're digging down even deeper um, to obviously turn it in from more of a basketball configuration into hockey, but, you know, the way that that facility will, will fit into the neighborhood, the way that there'll be, you know, a special tram right to the site, uh, it, it'll be in an incredibly green building. Uh, and and we're really, really proud of it. And obviously the sales have been tremendous. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Todd Lewicki and, and his team, I mean, there's a massive waiting list for seats and the premiums going well and, and the founding partners and the like. So, uh, yeah, that's that's a. It's always been a great hockey market. Right. You know, back to the the, the days. I know the the Supersonics were such a big part of the community, but they've got a great junior hockey and and right. actually pro hockey history. So that's that's really cool. And then and then in Austin, a joint venture with the university and uh, you know music in Austin and uh, 
you know, there really hasn't been a first class arena in Austin. And uh, with Live Nation being a, also a partner in that deal, as is Seattle, um, we think it's it's going to be a great, great setting right on the campus. University have, you know, the basketball teams will be there in university sports, but as well as a lot of music, a real, real music venue. And, and the opening Austin, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What's, go ahead. What's that? So the opening, the slated opening date for, for the arena is, is it 22? Yeah, 22. Yeah, more the mm -hmm. spring. Okay. Um, and I know Seattle was hit pretty hard initially, too, with COVID-19. And I don't know if that slowed things down a little bit as well. I mean, we're all faced with that. but Yeah, but, you know, we, we were able to, to move through that and react quickly with a plan uh, to to, you know, make sure that the, the workers were on site were safe and spaced properly. Um, so the, the crew there did a, just an outstanding job. So we thankfully didn't really miss a beat there, which is, which is important because obviously we want to be open and ready for the season. Right. Going back for a minute, Peter, in, in terms of um, the coronavirus and the arenas, and I know Oakview came out um, Pretty vocally in terms of, a, a, I think it was a division um, that a permanent division is it, being launched in terms of arena safety, um, cleanliness, you know, air purification. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I know you said you, you know you're busier than ever. Um, you know, as you establish that coming out of that, making sure all the facilities that you're not only building but managing are meeting those specifications. Yeah, I you know, to Tim's credit, I. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I think we had hadn't shut down, you know, it seems like 10 minutes and he called me up and said, listen, we, you know, this is something that we've got to get involved in. Uh, this is an opp opportunity to really be on top of the situation and open up our, our arenas, you know, even sooner than, than maybe some would think we could because we'd be on top of it and have a plan. Um, it's, you know, we having the arena alliances, is so important during these these times because now we have 29 of the largest facilities in North America and we were able to have calls and get on the call and discuss what we would like to do is how do we work together as an alliance to be ready to come back when you know government officials and leagues and everybody uh, and conscience for that matter are, are ready to go so um, we, we have a task force of our, of our arenas. Uh, and then we also are, are, have a task force that we've just about completed that will have some, some leaders that could help us get this done, meaning architects, mm -hmm. engineers, people, scientists, you know, people that can help us get to the point where certain applications or, or capital improvements that we would put into say air handling units or other areas could be tested to make sure that they actually, you know, help prevent this virus um, in arenas. So, so you, you need the arenas and where the operators, we can clean the buildings, but we need to have the proper applications and, and capital improvements maybe to, uh, to get this done. So, when you have your concessionaires, when you have somebody like an eco labs, you have mechanical engineers, um, and, and, you, and you have people that, that know the science surrounding these, these materials, we all band together, we can hopefully get back quicker and, uh, and, and support leagues, teams, concerts, and our businesses. Peter, I was talking to somebody the other day too about coming back, and, and I know a lot of it's TBD and it's changing daily. Um, weekly in terms of when gets reopened and when sporting events come back and then all the in empty arenas and over time do the arenas get I don't say reconfigured but you look at the manifest and do you seat people every others and I know there's got to be a number of different scenarios being discussed within the facilities that not only you manage or constructing but a part of the alliance is there, I mean, that's got to be extremely complicated. I don't know how detailed you get there. There's obviously the ticketing provider. There's the arena. There's the operations. Do, do people sit next to each other? Do you space the arena out? Just curious to know how involved, if any, you've been involved in that aspect of it. Yeah, no, we've been, we've, and, and along with many of the, the facilities, we've been modeling, you know, 
various levels of, of comeback, um, whether they may happen or not. You know, first there's the, the empty buildings, you know, teams playing in an empty building. How would you handle that? You know, and by the way, when you play in an, in an empty building, you know, there's, you know, it's probably going to be some 300 people or so in that, in that right. facility right. to produce that event with, you know, you think about it, you know, players, coaches, TV, you know, some security, um, you know, a vice official. So, you know, it's, it's quite a crew that would be there. Then you, then you look into the spacing. Uh, I think that one's very difficult personally. I, I think, I, I, you know, how do you tell which season tickets holders can come and not come? Yeah. You know, what artist wants to play before, yeah. you know, a third of the house. Uh, but we're modeling it. You know, because if somebody says this is what we would like to look at, then we're going to be prepared to look at it. And then obviously, most importantly, being prepared to come back to work in a full, full bowl. And, you know, then that's twofold. You have your patrons that you obviously want to be safe and to feel very comfortable. But you also have to, you know, you've got as many as 2000 workers in a building that obviously right. you, you'll want them coming in healthy and, and, and then them at the same time feeling comfortable. It, it, I mean, it, obviously, unprecedented times that no one's dealt with in the past. You know, I was going to talk to you about some of the other crises that you've dealt with in your, you know, tremendous career. You know, talking about 9-11, and that was a different concept because that was a concentrated time and the country was united. But uh, if it was two weeks later, it restarted, and you were at the Flyers there and, and sports coming back and being a uniter. And then there was the NHL lockout that you dealt with when you at the Flyers where you lost – there were two or three different lockouts, unfortunately, I think you dealt with. But, you know, the biggest one being the last season in 04, 05. You know, this can't compare. But as you deal with the crisis, Peter, you know, we, we talked to Frank Zapovic the other day and who's been around in the event business and running both NHL mega events and NFL Super Bowls and so forth and dealing with some of those things. But, you know, how, I mean, again, unprecedented, but how would you rate as you're dealing with this versus some of the other crises you've dealt with in your career? Well, you know, you know, it's interesting. Uh, obviously this is a worldwide pandemic. I, you know, I, I don't think, you know, this is a generational pandemic. Um, this is something that, that hopefully, you know, will never happen again. Uh, and, and if, as I, as I mentioned, it affects the world. I mean, my, my first crisis was making a run for it in the LA riots. <laughs> in Los right. Angeles and, and right. actually having the LA Coliseum and sports arena become a literally a military base for six weeks that's right. uh, that through nine 11. And then obviously the lockouts, um, you know, and I'm sure Frank mentioned this, you know, you deal with whatever presents itself. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, and I think, you know, if, if you use common sense and you're thoughtful and see the task at hand, and see what the issues and maybe the obstacles are to coming back. Uh, you just you just deal with it. And you know, you mentioned nine eleven, and I remember one of the issues of the day, and it was horrific and obviously centralized to to New York. Uh, but the you know the issue of the day was, if you recall, Scott, will people go to sporting events? Will, uh, will they go to concerts? Will they go to restaurants? Because they'd be afraid to, of a terrorist attack. Right. Um, and, you know, the answer to that was probably when, you know, George Bush threw out the first pitch at the World Series. It was, you know, we're, we're Americans. We can overcome anything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, you know, fully believe that that's going to be the situation here, that people are going to want to go out. They're going to want to go to events. Uh they're, they're go they want people want to socialize that's who we are but also i believe as an industry and when i say industry i mean the arenas the leagues the concert producers everybody we're going to have to obviously work together to, to make sure that that our patrons are comfortable and we're providing a safe environment so a uh, totally unprecedented but i think along the way some lessons learned from the more, what I would call more isolated situations and very unfortunate and terrible, but, uh, but at the same time, you know, we, we all learn something from all of them. Yeah. No, it's going to be interesting. Again, what, you know, I, as I sit where I am and I've been around the business like you for a number of years, but some of the things that now you bring up here, but Frank, in our discussion, you don't even think about, 
uh, I mean, you think about the ingress and the wanding yes. and the security and the restrooms and you know all the things that you're not undoubtedly spending your days on uh, planning accordingly is just overwhelming, I'm sure, in many instances as you, you prepare for that. What well, about as, you, you know, as you walk through the steps, Scott, right, from, from when someone enters the parking lot, right through they to they get to their seat and then stay in the arena for their for their game for the game of the concert you think of all the touch points right that, mm -hmm. that you've got to deal with it it is it, it's, it's it's unbelievable it's unbelievable what, what people are touching and sensing and and traveling within an arena stadium or convention center right. or anything right well a lot of it too peter that you've dealt with and you mentioned that it's just a lot of it's preparing um you know, and, and I'm sure you're spending you know multitude of time, your experiences in running numerous facilities, you know, being prepared for anything, uh, not everything, but being prepared for anything, I guess, is, is all part of the process. And that's for your and your team. What about globally, Peter? I know OBG has um, projects in the UK, I think Manchester, they got Milan, the joint venture with Live Nation, I think Shanghai, if I'm not mistaken, that you at least been in discussions there. How has the global, I mean, this is obviously affecting us globally. Is that projects there been able to maintain and keep pace? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they haven't begun construction. So okay. it, it, that, in, in those cases, they have maintained pace. Um, uh, but also, uh, you know, as you bring that up, you know, obviously there's how do we come back in existing facilities, but are there any design changes now? Mm -hmm. that we have to be thinking about uh, as the world has changed and going forward. And will there be design elements, whether it's, you know, your me mechanical, electrical, your air handling units, you know, uh, spaces in a building, you know, will you space differently? Um, I, I don't know how much you could really do with a bowl, but, you know, looking at some of your ancillary areas, you know, venting in bathrooms and, and you're building it just on and on and on. So yeah. um, that the design of arenas, and it may, may be something that not maybe the public doesn't see uh, at an event, but I think, you know, there will be designs that will change the way um, our, our buildings operate. In the future. I mean, that'll like become the new center. normal, right? Yeah, it'll be new, yeah. Yeah, we, you we know, including, including testing, you know, coming into a building are you pre-tested before you get there is there an app that pre-tests you you know you know do you do it at the arena and these are all the things that people are discussing right now is that the cause and you know what effect that, yeah. that will have well um talking about the obg shifting again a little bit peter but you know obg has been terrific terrific growth you know you're managing all the facility side on, on construction the alliance uh, as you build out private manage, uh, uh, third party management facilities. Are there any new projects you can talk about? Uh, we talked about the construction, Belmont, Seattle, Austin, anything else that you can. I think, I think we've hit upon that. We, we've got some others in discussion that we really can't talk about at this, at this time. But I, I think the key is, is as a company, um, we're, we're looking to do this worldwide, um, looking to find, great partners, whether, you know, it's Man City, a team or a university or, or a hockey team. Um, we started the companies and then the support in many ways, we, we get incredible support from Live Nation is the real belief in music and believing that music is such a big part of our arena and it's so popular where you know scott we grew up you know you, you know you're at the forum your tenants in your mind are the lakers and the kings you know um it, it, you know we view it as your your second or third tenant is music and if you look at a lot of these a markets they're doing 40 to 60 concerts a year which is really right about what a, a team would play, you know, 41 or yeah. you know, maybe 43 games and plus playoffs. So, you know, we're, you're, you're really, once you view music as a tenant and, and the need for music and how people love music, um, 
our belief is that it, it just has not been given its due and, and you know, and, and sort of exploited in a way that, and, and buildings being designed with great backstage areas and, and amenities for concerts, great sound, you know, to create, not, not to try and convert a sports environment to a concert environment, but to create an environment that's great for both sports and concerts. And I think that's the key. And that's what you're going to see in Seattle, Belmont, Austin, Man City. And that's changed over the world, right, Peter? I mean, you look at your years of running facilities for uh, Comcast Spectacor. And, you know, there was a time, if I remember correctly, it wasn't specifically on the end of the business, but where there weren't a lot of music touring acts. It went through a period of time uh, where they, the music industry became a, a str struggle may not be the right word, but now uh, more than ever, right? I mean, the touring acts, you talk about 40, 30, 40, 50 concerts in a facility, that's dramatically changed, at least over the last, what, 15 years? Yeah, I, I think, you know, there, there was earlier in my career, there were all kinds of acts touring and then it, then it slowed down a bit. I mean, it's always been good and now it's, it's better than ever, but you know, the, the business has changed and, there is no such thing as a record CD or right. or any of that. So when you when you look at it, it uh, you know the, the acts really to make they really make their money touring, and that couldn't be better for the arena stadium business. Right. Uh, the touring acts and 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 I think that's great. And 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 for us in in the facility business. We, we have to be a good host and we have to have arenas, stadiums that can host these shows and because and, they're important. And we have to have the proper dressing rooms, load in, you know, all the things you need to have a great experience for not only the fan, but the band. Have you had, I know Taylor Swift, I think canceled her, I mean, among others, perhaps, uh, her, her tour, you know, was gonna kick off in LA at the stadium there. Has there been a fall off? I mean, I don't mean to be, you know, trite, but has there been a fall off on acts given where we are, at least postponements? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the good news is uh, they they're not canceling; they're just moving to to later dates. So uh, tours are moving back. Um, a lot of our arenas have already had some dates that that have moved, uh, but it hasn't been a you know, a situation where people say, well, I'm just not touring. It's like, right. okay, let right. me just move the dates to, to when, um, when we come back now, you know, unfortunately, you know, we don't have a date when we're coming back, but, uh, the good news is, um, the industry has been so strong that the, the people are just looking for that signal and time to get back in business. And that's a tough part, right? You're going to have to juggle all the scheduling between the leagues and where yeah. multi, we have NBA, NHL shared facilities, uh, where the scheduling is just going to be a, a, you know, a big challenge, where you reschedule both the, the, the leagues as well as the acts and things. Yeah, I, I think, you know, and, and we've seen this already. And again, there's so many unknowns that, but we, 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 the leagues and the shows, everybody's been flexible because everybody appreciates the severity of the situation. So, yeah. you know, and, and it goes to tell you something about people. Like when things are at their worst, it's generally when they're at their best. And really everybody's been at their best saying, okay, let's all figure out. Let's, this is an industry. This is a business. How do we get back to, to our normal time? So it's, it's, it's actually been enlightening to see how everybody just wants to yeah. hit you. Good. Shifting gears, but I want to take a, a ton of your time, Peter, because I know you're busy. But for those that are unaware and, and those that may tune in and, and watch this on our YouTube channel, talk just briefly about the OVG uh, business units. I think there's six or seven business units now yeah. in OVG um, and perhaps even expanding, but from the facility side to the global partnership side, et cetera. Yeah. So, you know, uh, we've talked enough about the facilities division and and our development side, but you know we're 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 the only company that actually has a, a development arm and, and um, that can actually you know finance a building, uh, find the funding for that building, and and you know under Steve Collins and Francesca Bodie, they you know 
Steve oversees all of our projects, all, all the construction. There, there is nobody that really has that, that construction procurement, the ability to develop, the ability to finance a project. And, mm -hmm. and that we're very proud of. So aside from myself and others who are operators, we have the people with the skills who can, can do much more than that and procure the financing and, and, and build the buildings. Um, Global Partnerships really uh, supports uh, our sponsorships and the premium that, that it takes to build an arena, uh, naming rights, you know, selling the premium and the like. And that's obviously very, very important in supporting our arena alliance. Um, you know, one of the, the facets of the arena alliance is as we provide sponsorships and, and help them secure more shows was to get non-traditional sponsors. Mm -hmm. And as you know, everybody has a, you know, they have a car deal, a beer deal, a soda deal, a financial deal. They, these big arenas, they operate well, they know what they're doing, but for Dan Griffiths and his crew to, you know, to, to get Walmart, right. to get a PetSmart, to get Belkin, to get Zoom, by the way, uh, you know, in, which obviously is, has been very important during these trying times yeah. to, to get these non-traditional sponsors to arenas. Um, you know, obviously it's just fantastic to find a new, a new rev revenue source for those arenas, but also it's really something that, ha that hasn't been done is to aggregate 29 buildings and say, okay, Walmart, you know, we can put you before 72 million people plus use the assets oh. of this of their social media data, et cetera. So it's, you know, it's probably double that. Um, so that, that's what, what Dan and his group does. And then Mike Downing, uh, who formerly was the, uh, in charge of anti-terrorism unit at uh, LAPD is our preventive partners, um, which, which is interesting in, in, in these times, um, but, you know, and, and Mike's group works on obviously the, the latest security issues in the world, disseminate that in, information to our industry, but also working to help facilities uh, become yeah, with the, the Safety Act and, and to be compliant there uh, and, and those issues. And now as we get into this, Mike will be an important player as we even look as how we're going to not so much clean buildings, but provide that environment in terms of the various monitoring devices. Mm -hmm. You know, we're looking at the thermal devices, as I was mentioning, and, and other types of things. Uh, Mike, Mike has got the best intelligence literally in the world and, and, and a big part of that. And then, um, you know, our, with Polestar, our, our conference is uh, very, very important to us. Um, you know, really, our idea was to help you know, have a very meaningful publication. You know, Polestar has been a tradition. It's been fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, Tim early on felt it could do more. Uh, and then, and then obviously, you know, the Polestar conference venues today, um, the speakers we've had at these conference of, conferences have been phenomenal, you know, oh, yeah. leaders in the industry. And we need that forum because as big as we all think our industry is, because we've grown up in it, um, it's a relatively tight knit group. And when we come together, we, it's got to be meaningful. It, it, it just can't be, you know, the same as last year. And, you know, and you know, you've been around. You've done a great job of that, Peter. And one thing my biggest complaints with all due respect is that many of the conferences in this injury is so redundant. The, the yeah. content you get up there and it's the same people talking about the same stuff. And, you know, We've been a very small partner of the, the Venues Now conference a couple for a couple of different years, but you've done a phenomenal job and your group's done a job of putting together meaningful dialogue that isn't a redundant dialogue, so uh, to your yeah. point. You know, we, we want people to come in, you know, be able to rub elbows with Michael Rapino, you know, Rob Light, you know, Jared Smith, you know, on and on and on, you know, some of the, some of the great people that are running tours you know, right. it, it, and then, and then, you know, whether it's Apple and other, other people that really are making a difference in the world, it's, uh, that's what we're charged. That's what we have to do. And that's what we have to do to be a better industry. Because one thing, you know, Scott, from being around, there's been times when our industry has been late adapters, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, we, and we can't do that. We, we, we've got to be at the forefront. 
Well, and you guys have done, I'm not being overly gratuitous, you guys have done a great job in building in what's been three or four years at the Oakview Group and the team that put together between yourself and Tim and Dan, and there's so many, many others, so. Um, yeah, and, 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 and you know, Irving is so powerful. Uh, you know, Irving, you know, every, everybody obviously knows Irving from the music and, and his history, but one thing, and even when I was much younger, even in the 80s, and MCA was our partner in LA at the Coliseum and Sports Arena. So I had a chance to, to, to work with a Irving at, at a very young age. It, Irving is just, he, he is like a sponge. Like, see, he's just not his music. He politically is astute. He was always interested in the venues, you know, the merchandising, which he was mm -hmm. involved in. But you know, he would walk the building with you. So he understood the arena stadium side of the music where others did, they were just concentrated backstage on their act yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, which they should be. But, but Irving was more than that. And he's always been pro facility. Uh, obviously, you know, he, he represents his acts better than anybody, but, but at the same time understands the facility side so it, it there's a real there's you know there's a he, he's got this real combination that maybe others don't have yeah no, impressive group you put together too we got a couple more minutes peter um and this may be a tough question to ask because you've done so much in your career over i don't know if it's been 40 years you got a very uh early start to your career um but is there one or you know maybe two achievements you can put your finger on and say this is what i'm most proud of or this is something that well, as i look back on when i retire and go to my house in florida and and, and, and <laughs> relax is there something you could say this is what you know was extremely prideful well i i think you know opening this core state center at the time now the wells fargo center i i thought that was just the greatest experience um you know it it, you know, to and I'll be quick with the story, but when when we did the deal, it was really under Red Snyder. We we did the deal with Comcast to become partners with them. We, we were already under construction, and at the time, uh, we had the Spectrum and the Flyers, and um, you know, Ed Snyder had done well, and you know, it certainly uh, had been had some wealth, but he put it all up to build the Wells Fargo Center at, at a time in his career when he really didn't have to. So to be literally in the war room with him for, you know, let's call it four years. Um, and, and knowing that the, the Wells Fargo Center, of course, State Center was basically his personal mortgage. You yeah. know, he put the team up and everything. Um, and, and I'm not saying from a pressure standpoint, but just being with him and many others uh, hand in hand, you know, not knowing how successful it was. And we were selling our premium and naming rights and sponsorship during a work stoppage. <laughs> so that was. Uh, 94? Yeah, it was. Yeah. So we were selling the premium um, uh, and at, at a very difficult time. And the economy wasn't even, wasn't that good either. Um, so uh, that was, you know, to see that building open and to see we hit our numbers, hit our budget, uh, you know, just to see the, the, the pride Ed had and, and, and probably relief, <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, that to me was great. And then, and then having the ability to start a private management company, a ticketing company and a food service company uh, under Ed Snyder was just was just awesome and and I think as you get a little older probably the the other crowning achievement um isn't one instant but it's uh having the ability to start young but then also give young people opportunity uh the people that have gone on uh, both both from actually my from the hockey side and and the facility side to see them uh you know, go on to, to run big facilities, to, to run companies, uh, to see players now become head coaches. Craig Brewer, you win a Stanley Cup. Um, right. You know, 
that that to me yeah. is more lasting than a single event. Well, Peter, and you're, you're modest about this, but there isn't, you know, often many, many, many conversations I have with people throughout the years who talked about your morning skates, where you'd have hockey games at, I don't know, seven o'clock in the morning before work with these young, and you had young staffers there, you had senior staffers there. And I've talked to many people who say, Peter's the nicest guy, we used to have these games that are uber competitive. But those people, to your point, have gone on and, and moved on and through your tutelage and running facilities or running teams. Um, and I tell you that people really, really, really appreciate that, Peter. And I know you take that lightly, but there's a lot of people who talk back on that and say, unbelievable experience. Yeah, it was fantastic, you know, both in Philly and Florida. And, uh, you know, it, that's, to me, it was so great because I think, and, and I think as executives, you know, we got to realize, you know, that a lot of these young people, and I'm sad, you know, they, it's almost like they think you were born the president of the team, right? <laughs> yeah. and, 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 you know, and, and to sit in a locker room where now all of a sudden, you know, you're putting your skates on, you got your equipment and you, you know, you're all together. And then afterwards you, you know, you're giving each other a bit of shit, having fun. Um, yeah. They start to say, wow, this guy's a human. And then they start talking to you and then you tell them like, Hey, I had your job, you know, like yeah. they're like, no kidding. And you know, it was always cool for me was when they would want to come in and talk about, you know, their career and, you know, how could you help me and what should I do? And you'd give them some advice, but equally as important is maybe when they were looking, you know, listen, I want to buy a house. Do you know anyone who could help me, you know, car loans, you know, stuff like yeah. that. Cause then you knew they had some trust in you Yeah. because I, I, I've always said that the more, the bigger your organization gets, the more you realize you work for the people, they don't work for you. And, and if you can realize that, yeah, that you're impressive. there to support them, you can be successful. If you, if you think you're just boss, uh, you got a problem. Peter, and look, as, as recruiters and when I've segued into my career over the last 13, 14 years, every project we work on is about, you know, what's the culture of the organization, right? And, and who are the people, as we talk to senior executives about an opportunity, well, What's the ownership like? What's the senior leadership like? What's the culture like? And vice versa. But it's those stories, Peter, that there, there's organizations that there's, you know, grind, grind, grind. People are, can be assholes, pardon the expression. But to your credit, I mean, you've got great demeanor, great people skills, great leadership skills. And it says a lot for the kids that come in and ask you about car loans or home loans, because that means that you're a good leader and you don't sit in the corner office and tell everybody, you know, don't come in here. Yeah, the worst, the worst is do more. And, and, I, and I'll tell you, that's, that's what is so much fun now with OVG. Because, you know, Tim has, you know, was a similar, unbelievable experience on the West Coast and everything that he did. And then, and then Irving, you know, what, what he's done. In, in this, and we're all sort of the same ilk, you know. It's about the people. You, you know, we don't make anything. It, people do great things. And you lead people and uh, work with people, but the people are going to be the accomplishment. And, and you know, and, and Tim's very passionate that way. And that's what's been so much fun about working with him is he really, really cares about people. And obviously I feel the same way, um, you know, and, and he wants to see everybody succeed because he's also at that point in his career. It's not, it, it, it's about the, it's a, you know, it sounds cliche as from the team side, but it really is about the team yeah. and the people. Like it, if, if people are dreading going to work, you can't have any success. It just can't happen. If it's a, if it's a job, you're done. Um, well, it's, you know, and, and it's all, all the things we could talk a long time about that, but it's, it starts with leadership, but it, but it talk about it all the time with, with people in candidates. If you're lucky enough to work, in a job that you have a passion for and you wake up in the morning and you love to go to work and you can't wait to get to work because that's the environment, that's the industry. You're so far ahead of everybody else. And, and that's so critically important in anyone's career. So, you know, yeah, no, it's, it's, know. it's great. And listen, you know, you've got the varied experience. I, I think that's what, what makes you successful at what you do in your company is that you've been there, right? You've been in the trenches, you've been in the business, um, you know, it, it, you know, there's other 
other firms maybe that you, you, you know you don't you don't really want to hire a resume that's the most dangerous thing you can do if, yeah. if you're on the other end and if you can ferret out based on your your experiences and your knowledge and and you know so you've paid the price to build a business based on knowing the industry and, and the needs of your your clients um so that's where i think the experience factor comes in and that's you know i think young people are brilliant today smarter than ever frankly but there is there is that experience factor too that you have to gain over time to be really really successful well peter we could talk for a long time and yeah. i've always enjoyed you've been a great friend and, and frankly have been a mentor of mine uh just throughout my career and our times that we've touched so i can't thank you enough i wish you continued success trying times for us all so i know you got your challenges but stay safe first and foremost hope the family's well uh, and out of harm's way and i look forward to talking to you again really really soon but thanks for your time sounds good thanks thanks scott thank you